Because they also like, he's like, would you like to be tested? Oh, I did the Asian accent. Sorry. Folks. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he means no harm. I mean no harm by it. It's a <laughs> habit. I mean, no, it's not a habit. It's the first time I ever do it. Um, <laughs> welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Heal. Hello, everybody. And today we're here to talk about the travesty that is Star Wars <laughs> The Acolyte Episode 3. Todd, what did you think the story was in episode three? Uh, third episode, folks. Time to fill in that backstory. Welcome to OSHA and May, the early years. The early years, <laughs> yeah. So, Todd, this uh, this this was bad. This was real bad, right? Uh, if I'm going to be honest, which I'm going to be, uh, this was <laughs> You're not, never honest, Todd. <laughs> this was not a new high mark for what I think has been a subpar season so far. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, you know, we were lukewarm at best i don't even know if we would call it lukewarm we both felt the first episodes were were subpar to mediocre yeah. first episode and the second episode for me this goes down an even further notch down <laughs> the the ladder into the bad territory this was definitely probably one of the worst episodes of any star wars tv that i've seen and to be fair i've not watched it all but what right. i have watched comparing this to book of boba fett later mandalorian seasons all that stuff. It's yeah. it's not good, Chief. Gotcha. <laughs> it ain't it ain't good at all, Chief. Uh, so in this entire episode, you know, it's dedicated to showing us uh, Ocean May's tragic childhood backstory, as you mentioned. We see they were raised in all female witch coven. Yes. Uh, we meet their mother and the woman who apparently carried them. Yes. Uh, we see the younger versions of our four Jedi. We got Indara, Sol, Kalnaka, and Torben. And we see a lot more than just those things, Todd. Uh, none of it None of it good, though. <laughs> not, not, none of it good at all. Uh, you know, one thing this show didn't need, Todd, after coming off the, like, the, the, the lackluster episodes in episode one and two, it didn't need to be carried mostly by children. Oh, yeah. And the acting of children. Uh, and the, the not so good acting of children, of children at all, yeah. And I'm like, there there are children, so I don't want to be like, I don't want to come down on them so hard because, yeah. like, you know, again, they're children, and like, I'll just call their their presence and their acting. I'll say it was it was grading gotcha. more than anything. That's gotcha, that's how gotcha. I'll describe it as grading. Yeah. It really it really got on your nerves after a while, right? And I mean, they they aren't helped by the shit writing of the show, and that's. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big problem of the writing and the, the, the dialogue in this show. is It's terrible, Todd. Uh, tell us about the relationship between young Osha and May and what they're getting up to in the coven here. So uh, we see the twins, and uh, boy, are they still really hitting us over the head with that concept that they are twins. Uh, same clothing, same hairstyle, even back when they were young. Mm -hmm. But you kind of see uh, Osha, she's, she kind of wants to kind of break off she wants to do her own thing she kind of wants to be her own person whereas may she's all for being twinsies you know you know one is one one is two two is two let's you know let's stay together <laughs> yeah she's uh, she's all about the witch life uh yeah, yeah. they definitely set up osha as like this she wants to travel the world she wants to see things she's kind of enthralled by the what the, the jedi uh, order could offer her more maybe as a way out more than anything else and like all that's kind of set up in this like yeah. in the early parts of this episode like uh, going into I guess we'll, let's go ahead and talk about this all female witch coven it's been much talked about okay. in the, the last few days of uh, this episode's release so this coven is led by a mother Anasaya she's Basically, who the girls refer to as Mama, like that's you know mm -hmm. what we see them refer to her as. We see Mother Anasaya teaching a lesson about how the Coven perceive the Force, and they refer to it as the Thread. I think this is the first time that you've visibly ever seen the Force that I can recall. You're actually, manifested into something. Into maybe? something, yeah. I mean, I've never really seen that. So, what what do you think about how the Coven perceives the Force and how it's like? depicted on screen in the show like again it's referred through you know to as the thread and we see kind of her physically kind of creating it. how do you feel about all that you know honestly you know we recently talked about with our sequels uh videos we did about how you know the force doesn't always have to be these stuffed white you know these stuffed shirt you know monk types right you know and I think there was a good concept here about, you know, how, you know, other parts of the universe, other parts of the galaxy can perceive and use and see the force. I'm not quite sure, sold on maybe the manifestation of it being an actual visible thread, but I think there was a good concept here. I just think maybe the execution of it maybe wasn't the best. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I know a lot of people have have a lot of different takes about this just from the 
the little bit of the, you know, delving into like the reactions to this episode that I've seen. Like, I'm not, I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind that there's other force practices. Yeah, or sex out there mm-hmm. that, you know, that, you know, delve into the force and and view it differently and have a different interpretation and different uses. I think you know part of the problem is just maybe how it's depicted and what they do with it and, like, right. the fact that she's like, oh, the Force is not a weapon and immediately uses it as a weapon right. against people in the in the room where she's given the lesson. So, like, it's a little it's a little convoluted, but, like, overall, I don't mind it. And, like, this is not the first time in Star Wars that there's been, like, witches, you know, there's, like, the, there's the, the night witches or whatever they're called, the night ladies of Dathomir or whatever and okay. all this and the lore yeah. and stuff like that. But, like... I don't know. Like, I'm not against it. I don't think that's. I don't think that's the problem with it. Again, it's just like with modern Star Wars. It's not so much the ideas. Sometimes it's the execution of said ideas, and I think everything else that kind of comes from this is what weighs it down in terms of how it's executed on screen. Like, maybe not that singular idea, but like the rest of what you see after that. Right. Right. Because like it, it stated that her companion in her right hand, I can't remember her name. Time we'll call her horny. <laughs> Horny lady, because she's like a Darth Maul, right? She's got the Darth Maul horns. Mother Coral, I actually looked okay. that up. Mother Coral. But I mean, I guess is she is she like a Darth Maul? She's got those. She horns. got the same exact know, look. Yeah. I don't know what that race is called in yeah. Star Wars, but uh, apparently she she actually carried the twins. Yeah. Like Mother Anasea, like manipulated the Force to create life inside of her, mm-hmm. and that that became two twin girls apparently. And I mean, it's, it's, it's stated exactly pretty much like that. And I'm like, the, the, the twins were created much like how Anakin Skywalker was created, I guess. I mean, the argument there, I guess, is Anakin Skywalker was created by the force. You know, you have Palpatine saying that he manipulated things, but I don't know. I think the interpretation most people have is that the, the force created Anakin. Right. He was like a virgin. And this is like a person using the force to create life. So, Todd, this I think this is the biggest point of contention for everybody. So, what do you think of the, the ladies kind of creating the twins and the impact of, you know, how that impacts how you think about Anakin Skywalker? Is he is he not so special anymore? What do you think? Well, it doesn't really uh, darken my view of Anakin because I don't really go back to anything other than the original trilogy. <laughs> But as far as the concept, I mean, if you go back and look at what they did in episode one and how that was maybe perceived at that time, that was maybe, that was kind of a sticking point, I think, for a lot of people, like, you know, this force, uh, force pregnancy, maybe force birth, uh, you know, it, it didn't really fly too much then, so why are you going to kind of years later back around and come back to that again? And to me, honestly, it just still doesn't fly right here either. It's just a little, it's a going a little bit, it's a bridge too far, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think people like look at it now as like, people draw like a hard line in the sand now because like we've had so many years now from the pre- prequels to like digest it and get mm-hmm. to that idea of like Anakin was created, you know, from the force or yeah. whatever have you. And then it's like, the time in between and then also like there's like a hard line that people so you seem to draw between like what George Lucas created and then what Disney's doing. And right. like that's kind of something that's like really pissed me off about the discourse around yeah. this show is that people like so I'll see these like videos that like take down these shield channels and I'm all for that because mm-hmm. like these the fucking shield channels that like just slurp up everything <laughs> right and like doesn't matter just because they want to be in with disney and they want to get invited to premieres and they want to see the show early so they can upload their content earlier than yeah. anyone and get the views and all that yeah fuck those people <laughs> yeah fuck them but they're they're some of the argument i see used is like they're like oh you know you're 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 destroying what george lucas like set up and i'm like jo- the the success of this uh, this franchise is almost in opposition <laughs> to what George Lucas intended. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's all, it's pretty much dumb fucking luck <laughs> that those three original movies came out as well as they did, especially the first one. Right. And then when he got around to making the prequels, he was like, he was dicking around to like the day before he needed to make a script. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it wasn't like this really big thought out thing. So I think like if you break lore, like, because people's like, you know, is this broken Star Wars? Right. Is the lore 
crush forever. <laughs> like he, he didn't know what the lore was. He was he was pulling it out of his ass as he went. And we see it as the established lore now, but like I'm not so big, you know, if you if you break lore and it's in service of a good show and a good story, yeah. So be it. Yeah. You know, I would prefer you right away around it to like explain why you're breaking the lore instead of just like you know, getting a sprinkle of what we got here. We got a little thread pulled. Right. See what I did there? A little, oh, yeah. a thread pulled. Yeah, but yeah. like, I don't know. People like seem to like just, you know, draw all this line in the sand about, well, you're ruining what George Lucas. And I'm always like, this dude was making it up as he fucking <laughs> went. It was almost a damn accident that we got three good movies. <laughs> right. And then look what happened when he was left to his own devices when he made the prequels, Todd. That's when it was just like unfettered. It was all Lucas, writing, directing, and look what you get out of right, that. Right. And then that's what you bring in stuff like midi chlorians, and people always kind of like pick and choose what they want to like say is canon or not canon yeah. in their own head anyway. It's like, I don't... Listen, like, do I like it? No. Like, I think... Why go there? Yeah. Like, did you need to go there? No. Like, did you need to have them, the baby or the twins, be this created? Like, why couldn't they just be? Why couldn't they just be sex babies, Todd? Why do they <laughs> right. gotta be? Like, why do they gotta be forced babies? <laughs> right. Right. Like, what's your point here? I don't, and I don't, and that's the thing. I don't think the show's gonna do anything with it to make it more interesting than what it is. Or just like. Ooh, you know, yeah. let's do this because we can do it. Like, you know. Right. Like, I, that's that's what pisses me off about it. I got you. Anyway, that's, I got you. that's my tangent for uh, <laughs> for this episode. Uh, so we see Osha and May. They've been preparing for a ceremony called the Ascension. This is where they'll become witches. And, and like, as you said before, May is more ready, but Osha not so sold on the idea. She's kind of... She's shown to want more than what's, you know, inside the walls of just the coven. She wants to explore the galaxy. She's interested in the Jedi. But most of all, she wants to live her own life. She's tired of, like, having to have the same hair as her sister. and Same clothes. Say, even though they keep the same hairstyle as their adults, apparently, too. Yeah. <laughs> they never change their hairstyle from that day forward. Uh, right. If you'll notice, based on episode one and two. <laughs> Uh, in the most cringe moment in the entire show, Todd, during the Ascension Ceremony, the witches began chanting something. Uh, what are they chanting, Todd? Uh, they are chanting the power of one, the power of two, the power of many. Yeah, and <laughs> if, if you don't believe us about how cringe this is, I'm going to put a clip in here. Just, just judge for yourself here. Welcome to Star Wars meets the craft. Exactly. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, I mean, that's, yeah. you know what's also cringe, Todd, though? Not leaving a like on this video. That's very cringe. Not subscribing to the channel. You gotta subscribe. That's very cringe, folks. That's very cringe. Yeah, you don't want to be cringe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that whole scene, like, who looks at that back in the dailies or sees the footage and like, yeah, this is how we should have done this scene. Like, how do you look at that and say... And sign off on that. Yeah, like, how do you look at, like, just the sing-songiness and, like, why couldn't it just be, like, one of them be, like, the power of one, and then two of them are, like, the power of two, and then all of them in unison be, like, the power, the power of, of many. many. And, like, it's just, like, a big voice in a chorus, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's, like, the power of many. <laughs> and then there's one woman over there, she's, like, having an orgasm. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, she's doing a... <laughs> and then they're all, like... <laughs> <laughs> and it's like the most awkward thing you've ever seen right. it's so cringe and it's like for a show that was always going to have to fight its way uphill Todd how do you look at that <laughs> how do you put that big of a boulder in your path <laughs> I don't I don't understand I don't understand the thinking at all behind the show and I, I don't understand the direction or the writing or who's getting paid for this Todd? <laughs> who's who's getting paid for this shit uh thankfully the Jedi show up to save us from the cringe uh why are four Jedi at the coven Todd do you want to explain that so they've kind of showed up uh they're uh kind of realized that 
you know, these kids are kind of getting, you know, maybe a little bit of force training, being indoctrinated into the force. You can't, be, you can't be training kids. Yeah, apparently that breaks some kind of republic the law. Republic I law. Guess you only Jedi can train children. Yeah, only Jedi can train kids. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's um. So like there's a, there's a part too like where like the Jedi are standing there. Osha decides to kind of they you know the, the mother tells her don't reveal yourself. She immediately reveals herself. Yeah. To the Jedi and like do, like Soul is like thinks it's a great idea to let a child hold his lightsaber. Here you go, kid. Which is like basically <laughs> like letting a toddler hold a loaded handgun. Right. Like I just wish she would have just turned it on and like <laughs> decapitated it by accident <laughs> or something like that or shot it through his chest yeah. like. Again, it's just like th- this gets into territory because um, they also like he's like, would you like to be tested? Oh, I did the Asian accent. Sorry. For so- <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he means no harm. I mean no harm by it. It's a <laughs> habit. I mean, no, it's not a habit. It's the first time I ever do it. Um, <laughs> but like, he's like, you know, would you like to be tested? Like, and to, to become a Jedi. And like, it's just, it gets into very creepy territory here in, in just a second. So, like, apparently the only the Jedi, like, they have the ability to test children at will right. at some point, even in this, like, outside of the Republic-controlled space, because they, like, mention that to, like, you know, the Jedi don't really have any authority here. And she's like, you know, w- you know, we have the right to test a child with your permission. <laughs> Which is it? Do you have the right to do it, or do you have to ask me permission? <laughs> if you'll sign off on it, yeah, we're going to do it. If you ask my permission, then I say, fuck you, get off my planet. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I'm doing here. Right. Like, I don't I don't understand. But they have uh, they arranged to have Ocean May brought to their ship for testing the following day. And then we see Mother Anasea. She kind of explains to the girl that they'll be able to stay with the cub and, uh, only if they, they lie to the Jedi during their test. So, of course, May agrees, but Osha, she said up to me, well, you know, I don't know. I don't yeah. know what to do. Yeah. Uh, even though she promises May that she's uh, she's not uh, she's not going to tell him the truth. She's going to lie to him. So May lies her way through the test, but of course Osha can't because she's she was so enthralled with the idea of being a, being Jedi. a Jedi. And uh, also noted again when we talked about like the mini chlorines, you see Torben like taking a blood sample from her. Mm-hmm. He doesn't say it's for like a mini chlorine test, but you know, <laughs> you know, you got that, and feeling. you immediately get sick. <laughs> You immediately get sick to your right. fucking stomach. They're like, oh, why do we have to remind everybody of midi chlorine counts and this right. bullshit? Um, anyways, was it just me or did did the Coven's methods for convincing the girls to stay and the Jedi's, you know, kind of their method for trying to convince Osha to leave? Like, did that make you feel a little icky or was that just me? Yeah, it was kind of icky on both sides because, you know, you got the Coven, uh, you know, you know, you could go in there and lie. You know, do whatever you have to do to fail this test. It's the only way you can stay with us. And then the Jedi is like, hey, you know, come be a Jedi. Come to Coruscant. You got to leave your entire family and your way of life behind. But come join us. Yeah, like, he, <laughs> Soul's giving, like, a hard sell. He's, like, he's selling this idea of, like, you know, the Jedi know you're special. And, like, you know, you, you know you're different from your family. And the idea that the Jedi are the ones that can see this specialness in you that no yeah. one else can see. And that she may be scared, but there, there are many other kids. There are thousands yeah. of other kids like her. And you, you can have all of this. Uh, you know, if you do what you want, not what your not what your mom tells you to do, is basically the message. And it's just like it's so it's so creepy. It and is. it goes back into that like there's like a long held theory or belief that people have about Jedi like stealing children and like indoctrinating. What do you what do you make of that? It does kind of seem like it from what we're seeing here. I mean, maybe there's some validation to that. <laughs> yeah, like it just like neither one of them like comes across as as great groups to be with. Like right. with, with the Coven or with the Jedi. Like yeah. it's like it very much comes across as creepy man in a starship with candy is promising <laughs> right. you like a, you'll get a lightsaber and indoctrinated is basically what it looks yeah. like on the outside or be a liar and deny who you really want to be and stay with us <laughs> yeah exactly yeah deny your true nature and stay here with us and be miserable and tied to your sister for the rest of your life yeah man you decide. You pick your poison. Yeah, you pick your poison. So Osha decides she wants to go. Uh, of course, this doesn't sit well with May, who goes from like, like touching hands with her in the beginning this. to their, you know, their special <laughs> twin little message they mm. have to each other to be like, "I'll kill you. <laughs> I'll fucking kill you right here." And so she like locks Osha in a room. She sets fire to a rock temple with a lantern. 
Right. Todd, uh, <laughs> with one that, lantern. Does that pass the smell test to you, Todd? Uh, something stinks. Uh, tell us how seemingly one lantern fire causes the destruction of this entire coven, Todd. Uh, you tell me. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they have their little words back and forth, and then all of a sudden, you know, we see uh, May kind of, you know, pull that lantern off and bust it down. All of a sudden, this place is engulfed. And the Jedi somehow are there. Saul shows up. He starts trying to get Osha out. And then they're going across into these other rooms, and they see most of the coven already dead. Yeah, there's <laughs> like, she sets she sets the fire outside the door. Outside the door of the room. immediately engulfs the rock wall and the steel door mm-hmm. in flames, which, okay, I guess that, that lantern has some liquid. Yeah. And then... The fire spreads so quickly that you see, you hear like an off screen explosion and yep. some screams. You see another explosion later, like of the interior. Uh, May and Osha again, like the, there's like they're on like a bridge or like a catwalk or something. Yeah, kind of collapses. Yeah, and, and May falls and Saul saves Osha. And then when you see them on the way out, like you said, the whole entire room is just like the rest of the coven lay dead where they stood. Right. There's no there's no debris on them. There's no lightsaber marks. None of that kind of stuff. They're just laying there. They're just laying there. And like the whole place just completely goes up. So like there has to be more it spread way too quick quickly. There has to be more to I think it's like a situation of like you're seeing like an unreliable narrator type of thing. Right. Because she went OSHA wakes up later and she's like, oh you know what happened? So like Whose perspective are we seeing? So there's got to be more to, like, what happened. Like, were the Jedi more involved? Why did they even come back there to you, start Yeah, with? why was why was Soul already there and so close by? So, like, you know there's more, but, like, if if not, if they just leave it as is, that's fucking dumb, right, Todd? It is. It's absolutely... <laughs> it is very yeah, dumb. Yeah, because, like, you know, you get, again, the fire spread too quickly, Soul being there. In, in episode two, you know, Torben kills himself and says, you know, he's killing himself for what they have done. Right. Like, if if we don't get any more than what they have done was what, testing those two girls? Yeah, if all they did was just their crime was try to test two girls to be Jedi, and, you know, it pissed May off so much that she's, like, got to get revenge on those four because they tested their sister and yeah. her. That's, that's After sus. she started the fire. After she started the fire. Yeah, if there's no other explanation and everyone just dropped dead from whatever. That's like, thin, Riggs. That's yeah, it's thin. very thin. It's <laughs> fucking anorexic, Todd. And then you got Kelnaka, too. He's kind of shown in episode, like the tease at the end of episode two. He seems like he's not with the Jedi Order anymore. Like, right. did he have a falling out with him? Like, there's got to be more to this. And if they're not... If there's not more, they've in, really dropped the ball. The writing has just really went downhill, <laughs> even further than it already has. But yeah, like again, it's there's no way that little lantern caused all that. Caused all that. Yeah, no sprinkler system in the coven. Top. I guess not. I guess it wasn't OSHA compliant. <laughs> <laughs> but <Ba-dum-bum. laughs> Ba-sha. there we go. Uh, in the last scene, Osha wakes up in the Jedi ship on its way back to Coruscant. So I was like, "Hey, your family's dead, but you can be uh, Padawan if you want." That's right. Da-dun, da-dun, da-dun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of Fuck You Show. That's the end of episode three. Todd, tell me what you liked and what you didn't like about episode three. Uh, about the only thing I did like was that concept that was not very well handled of, you know, other people, other sex, you know, actually using the force, you know, maybe calling it something different, interpreting it something different. But other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of meat on the bone here for me. Yeah. <laughs> and you hated it because it's lesbians, right? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I feel like every time we do one of these, we have to say, like, we don't hate women and we don't hate lesbians and be who you are. Like, yeah, I mean, we got to say all that. I'm going to start putting that as a disclaimer <laughs> before every episode, especially when we talk about Star Wars. It's like, Tau Cape does not hate, discriminate, you know, whatever. It's like a little yeah. disclaimer. Like, I mean, the whole fact that it was a There'll be somebody of, in the comments here. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to rake us over the coals. because they're gay. <laughs> I'm like, no. Todd's I mean, I gay. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> this just in. This just in. Todd retires from Tau Capes. <laughs> But the whole concept of the Coven of Witches and, you know, the mother and uh, I forget her name now, Coral. You know, yeah. there's a you know, a scene in the show where they have like me a little semi-intimate moment right there. I, that didn't bother me. I, I could care less about yeah. that. Yeah. 
you know, it's just the way you executed other things. And it just goes back to what we've, I've seen, like I've said this a lot here lately. You're just painting with the broad strokes. Right. You don't think about the finer details. You don't think about how this may look here, how this may work here. Does it ruin this? Does it, you know, totally destroy this? Right. This, you know, you know, we're going to shoot it. We're going to, we're going to put some dialogue to it. We're going to put it out there. We're going to stream it. It's done. Moving on. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, it's just, there's, again, there's not much thought here about it. The writing is terrible. The dialogue, you know, it's not even, again, it's not even a visually great-looking show. Have you ever noticed it's very grainy? There's a lot of film grain to it. It does look a little grainy. I don't understand that choice either. And, again, like, you know, original Star Wars and stuff, I can see it because, you know, it's the 70s and, like, right. grain was a part of the Film actual, grain was part of the, yeah, the material. <laughs> we're, we're going back to a more evolved time in the High Republic era. And, like, I don't understand the choice to, like, make it intentionally grainy for no reason. Like, yeah. it's just stuff like that. It's just, like, because we can, like you mentioned. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it just, this really, like, I was going to, I was, like, kind of set up to kind of stick around for this show and like see where it goes and this really like really just turned me off even more right just because of the decision making behind it again like who looks at that scene like that little ascension scene is like oh this is this is gold jerry <laughs> gold. Right, right. like you know like who who looks at it and like you know again some of the ideas you have here i'm all right with another uh, another cult like you know, sect of things out there that like look at the force differently than other mm-hmm. people do. Like, well, you yeah. know, that's fine. Yeah. But you know, did you have to make them uh, created by the force and all that? Couldn't they just been two twin girls that were birthed? Yeah. Normally. Normally. Yeah, and had a father out there somewhere, and maybe you just escaped to this coven or joined this coven, and right. you brought them up in this way of life, raised them as your own. Yeah. yeah. Star Wars has a weird thing about sex, like you know, it's a <laughs> sexless universe mostly. With right. like from what we've ever seen, it's like it's like the most like dirty kept secret of like the Star Wars universe is like oh, sex. What? No, nobody ever has sex in this universe. It's <laughs> the only way to make babies is they you're getting created out of nothing, apparently right, in the right. Star Wars universe. Like no one's ever, you know, yeah. had sex and created a baby, I guess, except for Anakin and Padme, I guess. Right. That was the only natural birth <laughs> that's ever been seen. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's terrible. It's it's really it's really it really is. It really and it like I was, you know, like I was whatever about like episode one and two, and I thought episode three, okay, we're gonna get. I thought we were going into the Wookiee story. That's what I thought too. I yeah. thought we were gonna see some like conf- you know confrontation with an ex Wookiee Jedi, and I'm like, okay, and then we get this, and I'm like, even more like <laughs> depressed about it, right? Like the state that the show is, is is leaving us in. Um, before we get to the reviews, and this is like. Could be major spoilery, so I'll just, like, put that out there, even though this whole thing is spoilers. But, like, there has been some, like, recent set leaks and, like, some set video leaks. And, you know, uh, I did look at them and go into them. I know we speculated kind of last week that, you know, we heard some theories that potentially, um, I forget what his name is, but Asian Ezra Miller guy from the Apothecary right. that helped May create the poison mm-hmm. from last episode and episode two. We, we heard a theory that potentially he could be the master because there's like a little altercation between them. He can like hold her, her his own with her. And she's like, mm, you know, like, and looking at some set leaks, there's definitely seems like that he could more evidence that, that he is the master like there's still some wiggle room but based on the set leaks that i've seen it's it's looking pretty strong that he might actually be the one that turns out to be the master right so do with that what you will Mm -hmm. but i just wanted to throw that out there again like uh, the does that also prove the writing is terrible that like you can really suss that out after episode two like, did they leave that in there intentionally, do you think? Is there anything clever coming of it? Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Todd, give us your review score and your final thoughts for the Acolyte Episode 3. Uh, to be honest, the only thing, like I've mentioned before, the only thing I really got out of this episode was the fact that, you know, we had another uh, sect, another group of people, this time a coven of witches that actually practiced what they saw as their version of the Force. Uh, manifested in a thread take what you will out of that but 
And actually, that was kind of enough for me to maybe still keep this at a four. I still stayed at a four. It's still subpar series for me. I, nothing has really moved the needle. And now that we found out maybe this possible spoilery thing about who the master is, the only thing that really is keeping me, would possibly keep me to go forward to be is like, what did those Jedi do to get made and want to kill all four of them? Please tell me it's something more than just wanting to test them to be Jedi. If it turns out to be that, then I feel like this series has been a total waste of my time. <laughs> yeah, and like, you know, that's something I just kind of thought of as you were like talking about because I, I wasn't listening to you. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jesus, what's uh, new about you? <laughs> um, no, I was thinking like, like you said, we the kind of the only big things that you have left in the show, like mystery wise, because this was sold as like this murder mystery mm -hmm. thing. It was supposed to be from the perspective of the Sith is how it was sold. That's bullshit, right? And it was supposed to be this murder mystery thing, which a lot of the mystery element was taken out in the first episode because oh, she has a twin, obviously, right? That's revealed. Then you're left with, okay, who is the master? And then there's the, the potential clue right. and or red herring maybe in episode two. And with the set leaks, who knows? Again, I'm not saying 100%, but it's more likely than it was before those set leaks yeah. that he's the master. Yep. And then the only other thing besides the master storyline is that you had what did the Jedi do? What would the Jedi have done so bad that Torben would have you know, put on a fake old man wig and killed himself with some poison. Right. And trying to figure that out. But then, like, that's your mystery. And and obviously, well, to us, the obvious thing is that there's more to that story. But then you've already kind of, like, you've already kind of, like, shot in your pants with it because, right. like, <laughs> you spent a whole episode showing that 16 years ago backstory mm -hmm. and you don't get any movement with that. So then we have to go back at some point to that bullshit. We'll have more backstory. And have more backstory to give. In an eight-episode show, we have to go back again. Somebody has to reveal that and reveal what happened unless this is just what happened. Yeah. So, like, it makes it even more dumb to me, honestly. Like, that we're going to have to – we spent a whole 30, 35 minutes going back 16 years to look at what happened, and you don't show what happened. And then you're trying to create this fake mystery where, like, you want it to, to appear on the surface that this is what happened and yeah. that may burn down the place with one lantern. Right. But it's just, like, doesn't that cheapen it more? Isn't it like a cock tease even more? Yeah, to it, like, does, it does lean towards that, yeah. Like, doesn't it's seeming it, that way. Yeah, it seems cheaper to me to, like, have it set up. Show show me a thirty minute show about what happened in the past, and then not really do. Show it. me what happened in the past. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey, big boy, you want to see? No, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, right. it's what it felt like. Like, or like, I don't know. It's just it gets on my nerves. Like, this, the show is like it really like it's not good. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the it's thing. It's not good. It doesn't have anything to do with any kind of. Sexual orientation, any, Here any we type go. of. I'll run the disclaimer <laughs> up and down the screen, Todd. I'm not even going to mention it anymore because it's yeah. not that. Yeah. It's just not a well written series so yeah, far. Like, would you say there's eight episodes? Yeah, with three mean, down. You, you've got you got time to turn it around for me, and if you do, I'll be the first one to come back here and tell be a you hell that of you a pivot, did. Though, Todd. Yeah, pay that. <laughs> be a <laughs> hell of a pay that. Yeah, that would be a <laughs> hell of a turnaround for this show to really pull something out of its ass. Like, yeah. You've already got a lot of bad will. Like, you know, some of it deserved, like, definitely from a story perspective. And then you have those people out there that are against it because it's women and it's woke and it's Star Wars and whatever. People actually have some hate towards it because of those reasons. But yeah, just from a story perspective and a show perspective, yeah. like, this is not, this is not premiere TV. And this month, this thing cost $180 million, Todd. Wow. <laughs> like, this this whole fucking eight episodes cost $180 180 million. million. Okay. That's like seven Godzilla minus ones I saw somebody put out there. Wow. Like, this is... When this, you put it like that. <laughs> all this money for this. And, like, that's what I said last week, and I'll hammer down on this point again. So get those comments ready. Like, if you're that, if you're, if you're these, like, witch coven, if you're, like, depicting, whether you're, you're actually straight or, or whether you're depicting on screen and you're, and you're uh, playing someone of a different yeah. sexual orientation, like, you, you got to have, you got to, we got to get people that's, like, willing to, like, challenge some of this stuff. Right. Whether it's behind the scenes, whether it's the actors, whether it's the people making these choices and being like, uh, Leslie, uh, Leslie Hedlund, you know, showrunner, mm -hmm. do you think this is the best 
version of this scene where we're all like the power of many. Right. You right. think that's the best? Could we? Could we? One more take on that, Leslie? Let's shoot it again this way. Yeah. Can, can we Let's just try, try something? Yeah. Can we try it this way? You know that kind of thing. Like, can we get someone with a voice here and like? Just stop. Let's, let's let's pick the right people to make these shows. Like, let's find the woman out there. If you want to empower a woman to, like, create a Star Wars show, let's find the one with the good idea. Right. Let's find the one with solid writing ability. Right. And that could show run this. Let's, like, yeah. find that one that has the best idea, not just the one nearest by. Gotcha. Definitely. That's the problem, yeah, I think, yeah. too. Here we go. Get them ready. Comments. <laughs> Send them my way. Calcapespot at gmail.com, baby. Send those emails. <laughs> All right, Todd. I think we'll call it a wrap. Oh, I didn't get my review. It's a three. <laughs> it's a three. I, I thought I forgot. It's a three for me, folks. We yeah. got off on a tangent it and we sucks. forgot. It sucks ass. <laughs> it's a three. That's bad. Uh, that's it for this episode, Todd. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email or get in touch uh, with us on social media. All the information will be on the screen. Tal Capes will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye, guys. See you guys.